Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be practicing more equations of motion. If you missed the intro video, go check that out. Jumping right in with our first example. Please try these first before you watch me do it. It's a great way to practice to see if you know what's going on. So I've got an airplane accelerating down a runway at 3.2 meters per second squared. So that is acceleration is 3.20 meters per second squared. They say the word accelerates, first of all, which means this is acceleration. And also the unit is a dead giveaway. It's got a minus two. Remember velocity and speed is meters per second with a negative one, just so we're clear on that because some students mix those up and they take 32.8 seconds. So this airplane takes 32.8 seconds until it finally lifts off the ground. Determine the distance traveled before takeoff. So we want distance. Now, if you laid out or listed your variables like that based on what it says in the paragraph, you might say, well, ma'am, I don't have enough variables. If you watch my intro video, you would remember that I said each of these equations have four variables in total listed inside of them. So if, for example, this one's got one, two, three, four, this one's got one, two, three, four, they all have four variables. So when you have to pick an equation of motion to use, you need to make sure that you know three out of the four variables. But at the moment, I only know one, two. However, there is such a thing as an implied variable. So it says here, an airplane accelerates down a runway. Now, when an airplane is on a runway, okay, eventually it's going to take off into the sky. But when it starts accelerating, it's starting from a velocity or a speed of zero. It's starting from rest. So you have to assume in this case that my initial velocity, my VI, is equal to zero. So therefore, I have three out of my four variables. So based on what has been given to me, I want to try and avoid ones that use VF just because I don't want to use more than one formula if I can just use one formula and be done. This one looks like a great option. So you write down your blank formula first, and you do get a mark for that. You substitute into that formula. So if VI is zero, it takes us 32.8 seconds. My acceleration is 3.2. My time is again 32.8. And I'm looking for the distance traveled before takeoff. So therefore, you type that into your calculator. And I get 1721,34 meters. Let's do another one. Our next question involves a feather being dropped on the moon from a height of 1.4 meters. So we've got a feather and it's being dropped down from the moon and it falls a height of 1.4 meters. So my distance, my displacement is 1.4 meters downwards. What I did forget to say in a lot of these questions is we need to choose a direction as a positive direction. So if I choose down as positive, this is just something to keep in mind. Then because the displacement is going down, it's falling down, it's going to be a positive 1.4. The acceleration of gravity on the moon is 1.67 meters per second squared. So my acceleration is 1.67 meters per second squared downwards. Just so you know, the gravitational acceleration on the moon is 1.67 meters per second squared. In comparison, acceleration due to gravity or gravitational acceleration on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So you see it's a lot less on the moon. Okay, so we're not as strongly attracted if you drop an object on the moon. There's a, a lot less acceleration acting on that object on the moon than if you were to drop that same object on the surface of Earth. Just keep that in mind. So acceleration is 1.67. Again, the negative 2 telling me that I'm dealing with acceleration and not velocity. Determine the time taken for the feather to fall to the surface of the moon. So we're looking for time. Again, I'm only given two variables. But like I told you, we need at least three to be able to use one of these formulas. Now, a very important thing that they do say here is that the feather is dropped. When we drop something, when we drop or release something, here's a hint. The initial velocity is zero. It's not moving. We drop it. It is released from rest. Now we have three variables and I can find my fourth variable. So I'm going to make use of this formula. Once again, I want to avoid VF because I don't have VF. So you write your blank formula first. So you get one formula for your blank formula. One, one mark for your blank formula. <laughs> what am I saying? One mark for your substitution for putting your variables in the correct places. And then you have to solve. Now, please do your mathematics very carefully. You should know that anything multiplied by zero is zero. So this term goes away. It becomes zero. Then we have half of 1.67. Why is that the number? Don't ask me. These questions were made years and years and years ago, just so everybody knows. Okay, so we've got 0, 0.835. And then we're still multiplying by delta t squared. Then you're going to say 1, 1,40 divided by, divide both sides by 0, 0,835. 
and I get 1,6766. Don't round this off. Then you're going to square root. The opposite of square, the inverse of square is square rooting. So you square root that and I get 1,29 seconds. Please remember, do not round off in the middle of the question. So although it looks like I rounded off here, I actually kept the whole number on my calculator. Our next question says a bullet is moving at a speed of 367 meters per second when it embeds into a lump moist of clay. That's quite random, but we have a piece of clay, we have a bullet traveling, and then the bullet is going to embed or get stuck in this piece of clay. It says the bullet penetrates for a distance of 0, 0,0621 meters. Determine the acceleration of the bullet while moving into the clay. Right, so we've got the initial speed or the initial velocity of this bullet is 367 meters per second squared. Let's say this way, forwards, is the positive direction. So the bullet is moving forwards, it's moving in the positive direction, so VI is positive. Then it embeds into a lump moist of clay. The bullet penetrates for this distance, 0, 0,0621 meters. Again, we're moving in the positive direction. It's embedding in the clay in that positive direction. So it's a positive displacement. And then they say determine the acceleration of the bullet while moving into the clay. So they want acceleration. Again, it looks like I only have two variables, but I need three. You need to once again assume one of our variables. And that's that our bullet is initially traveling at 367 meters per second. It's going to embed into a piece of clay, penetrate a certain distance, and then stop stop. Of course it's going to stop, otherwise it would have penetrated for a larger distance or would have gone straight through the clay. So we have to assume that the bullet is going to come to a stop. So that means that my final velocity is therefore zero. Now, how do we determine the acceleration? I'm going to make use of this formula because it has everything. I have that one, I have that one, I have this one, and I'm looking for acceleration. So once again, write down your blank formula first which of course gives you a mark, substitute in your values. So zero squared, 367 squared. Acceleration is what I'm looking for. And my displacement, my distance is 0, 0,0621. Now, how do you solve this? Well, zero squared is zero. 367 squared is 134689. And then this might sound silly, but some people get stuck with solving this. 2a, 0, 0,0621. You multiply the two with the 0, 0,0621. And you get 0, 0,1242 and then pop the A next to it. This times this is this and then you put the A next to it. Then you need to take this over. So we're going to subtract both sides by this number. So it's going to be 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9. And then this, oops, I'm writing that wrong. 1, 2, 4, 2, A. To get A by itself, we're going to divide both sides by this number. Divide both sides by 0, 0,1242. And you might be shocked by a few things with this answer. First of all, my answers are negative. One, zero, eight, four, four, five, two, comma, four, nine, six. It makes sense that it is a negative answer. And it makes sense that it's so big because this is acceleration of a bullet. Do you know how quickly a bullet must change its velocity to go from not moving, okay, to a massive speed or from a massive speed to stopping, its acceleration must be ginormous. Now, in this case, its acceleration is negative. And if you've watched my previous videos in my motion in one dimension playlist, you will know that a negative acceleration, remember, we chose forwards as our positive direction. Acceleration is in the opposite direction to the motion. Acceleration is a negative, it's negative acceleration. And this happens when my object slows down but it's moving in the positive direction. So in other words, my bullet is going this way. It's going that way. It's going in the positive direction. It's moving that way, but it's slowing down because it's eventually coming to a stop. So when your object slows down, it makes sense to get a negative acceleration. So what do we do? We rewrite it as a positive variable of positive value. So rewrite it as 1084452 comma four nine six you can round this off to two decimals so you could round it off to five zero if you wanted to your unit is meters per second squared a negative two not a negative one because you're working out acceleration and then you have to give a direction now your direction would be in the opposite direction or in the negative direction because you got a negative answer so I've said in the opposite direction to the motion. In other words, the bullet is moving that way, but acceleration is acting in the opposite direction, causing the bullet to slow down and eventually stop. And then last but definitely not least, last one for this video, it was once recorded that a Jaguar 
and I feel like I said that really weirdly, one of these, one of these cars, you know, left skid marks that were 290 meters in length. So essentially the distance that this car was going or the distance this car traveled was 290 meters because that is how long the skid marks were. Assuming that the Jaguar skidded to a stop, skidded to a stop. So my final velocity is going to be zero with a constant acceleration of 3.9 meters per second squared. So acceleration, 3.9 meters per second squared. We're going to speak about this now. Determine the speed of the Jaguar before it began to skid, before. So the initial, the before. Okay, this seems straightforward. We're given one, two, three variables. They said it comes to a stop, so they told us the final speed is zero. They told me how long it traveled for. They told me the acceleration. So what is the catch in this question? Well, the catch is that we had to choose a positive direction. So let's say the Jaguar traveled this way, the positive direction to the right or forwards or whatever. The skid marks are going to be in that direction, so a positive. My velocity is zero, so zero doesn't have a sign, it's just zero, but my car is coming to a stop. It was starting at a certain speed or velocity, and it skids like that, and it comes to a stop. So basically, what am I saying? What am I saying, everybody? I'm saying that my car is slowing down. It's traveling that way, but it's slowing down. And what did I just say about traveling in the positive direction? So the car's going forwards, but it's slowing down. It means that acceleration must be negative. So when we sub in to an equation, you must sub it in with a negative sign. So which equation are we picking? I think we should pick this one over here. Write the blank formula first, then substitute your values in. So my final velocity is zero, zero squared. My initial is what I'm looking for. My acceleration is negative three comma nine. If you sub it in as a positive, you will get marked wrong. Your distance or length or displacement is 290. So just so you know, you get a mark for your formula, you get a mark for your substitution. If you substituted that in as a positive by mistake, you will lose your second mark. So I get that. Then I add 2262 to both sides of the equation. You might say, oh, take it over. You know what I mean? Same thing. And then you square root both sides and you end up with the following. 47 comma 56 meters per second and you can either say in the positive direction or forwards or something like that you must give oh no you don't even need to give a direction what am i saying you don't need to give a direction because i said the speed determine the speed of the jaguar and you know speed is a scalar which means i don't need to give a direction so just 47 comma 56 meters per second so please be aware of these types of equations of motion negative acceleration because it's slowing down in the positive direction I really hope that that was helpful. Please let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Let me know in the comments down below. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you in any way and subscribe for more. I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye everybody.